thank you everyone for coming to this session, which I am personally just over the moon about. I'd like to introduce Heidi Solomon Orlick. Heidi is the Senior Vice President of Business Development for Arise Virtual Solutions, as well as the founder and CEO of Girls Who Sell and a book author and so much more. Heidi, thank you so much for being here today. Oh, I really appreciate it. I'm so honored and thrilled that you asked me to, to join. Um, so are we ready to get started? I'm ready. Can't speak All for right. everybody else. All right, then let's. <laughs> going. So welcome to the power of the pitch. Over the next 50 minutes, you are going to learn how to turn the pitch into your competitive differentiator. I have spent the last 35 years in professional sales and 10 years in advertising and marketing prior to that. And so I, I feel like I have a pretty good understanding of how challenging the role of sales could, to, uh, is, especially in today's world. So we're gonna talk about some of that and some of the, need, the new data that's just recently come out uh, about the future of sales. What you're going to learn in the next 50 minutes I'm going to share some interesting facts about sales and the sales process. What is a sales pitch? Why is it important? And how do we leverage it as a competitive differentiator? We're going to talk a bit about the elevator pitch, um, which, by the way, rarely happens in an elevator, um, mm -hmm. and why it's important. Um, and then some modern twists on the ele elevator pitch. And then I'm going to walk you through um, Girls Who Sell deck and give you some examples of what I use as a Girls Who Sell elevator pitch. And if we have time at the end of the call, I'm going to give you an opportunity. So get your, get your brains going um, to test it out and maybe share some elevator pitches on your own. So first of all, I just got back. Uh, from an outreach women in sales conference, and it was amazing. And Mary Shea, who's their futurist, um, it, who's done a lot of work on the current and future state of sales, uh, contracted with Forrester uh, on a new study, uh, taking a look at how the sales process has changed since 2019, pre-pandemic. And these are some interesting statistics that I want you to take into consideration because I think they play into how you need, how we all need to be able to approach the buying process and integrate and customize our sales pitches. So first of all, our buyers today have a lot of access to information. They're doing homework, they're reviewing our websites, they're analyzing us versus our competition. So they're already 70% down the buying journey before they even engage in the sales or with us with a salesperson. So in the sales pitch, what that means for you is that you don't want to regurgitate a bunch of information that they can just get on your website. You want to bring new and inf interesting information based on the research that you've done on the customer on how what product or service that you have and are offering is going to solve for their business challenges. The other really interesting fact is that there today is an, an average of 11 stakeholders involved in the B2B purchase. And depending on the complexity of the sale, that could actually go up as, as high as 22. Now think about that from a sales process perspective in terms of if you have 11 stakeholders in all different areas 
of the company. You need to have a complete understanding of your uh, ideal customer profile, of, of your buying per personas, and you may need to think about customizing your pitch depending on who you're talking to and which stakeholder that you're engaging with. Which goes to my next point that it can actually take as much as 27 interactions to close the deal. I will tell you, years ago, um, it was we were all talking seven or eight interactions across multiple stakeholders, and that seemed like a lot. But with multi channel outreach support being so prevalent today, it actually the number can continues to exponentially increase, and that is 27 interactions across the total number of stakeholders that you may need to engage with to get a deal closed. What's also interesting is that buyer channel preferences has have changed. And so what's important about that is you need to think about as you're putting together your pitch decks or your, your conversations, in terms of the channel that you're actually interacting with your customer with. Number one is virtual. Number two is phone. Number three is in-person. So whereas big prior to 2019, that was completely flipped. Now virtual has become a much uh, preferred channel in terms of overall interactions. Email and um, direct messaging has declined dramatically. So as you're going through and putting together your, your, your decks, think about the channel that you're going to be doing your outreach for. Salespeople are expected to be able, up oh, typo, sorry, but answer complex questions in a meeting. So because customers have already done a lot of their pre-work, um, they're expecting knowledgeable salespeople um, to be able to answer uh, their, their uh, detailed questions. Uh, and and to be able to talk in detail about how you're going to be able to solve for their business challenges. Uh, that is important because not only does it build trust and credibility, but it also shortens the buyer buying cycle. And then that's the last point is that the buying cycles in, in a business to business sales used to be about six to nine months. It has grown exponentially uh, in terms of the number of months it takes to actually close a deal. And that's a direct impact by the number of stake because of the number of stakeholders that are involved. So what is um, what is a sales pitch anyway? And why is it important? Well, a sales pitch is a is a, a spoken description or talk about the product or service that you're trying to sell intended to, two important words, persuade people to buy it or to believe in what you're selling. So these are some of the things that you need to know. Your pitch is actually a way to educate your customer on what you do, why you do it, whom you do it for, and the results that, that you achieve. And we're gonna talk about kind of a, a four-pronged structure to, to the pitch and to the elevator pitch in specific, but keep that in mind. What you do, why you do it, who you do it for, and then most importantly, the results that you achieve and then applying that to how you're going to be able to positively impact the customer or prospect's business. Your pitch is not a one size fits all. I think one of the biggest mistakes that salespeople make is that they have their general pitch decks and they show up to meetings and it doesn't matter which customer or which industry they may be selling into. Um, they just utilize the same presentation. There are probably some baseline slides that you can use that can be uh, repurposed, um, but do your homework before you, you create your pitch deck. And as much as possible, if you can customize it to the specific needs of the client, that it is going to set you up for a greater amount of success. Show your customer you know them. Show them you know them. This is a Samantha McKenna line, so I can't take any, uh, any uh, credit for that. 
but it's really important that you come to a, a, a sales meeting totally educated and that you had done your research on your prospect and that you do show them that you understand their business business and the challenges that they're facing today and that the solution that you bring to the table is going to be able to solve for their needs or not. Maybe during the call as you're doing additional discovery, you may realize that your product or service may not necessarily be the best fit uh, for that client. And that's okay as well. That's part of what these pitches and discovery calls are, are all about to make those kinds of determinations. Your pitch may vary depending on the stage of the deal, the communication channel, and the maturity of the deal. So definitely take the time to think through how you're going to modify your message uh, depending on deal stage and, and channel and the individual and level of the individual that you're talking to. What might be important to the CEO of a company may not be important or the same thing that's important for a vice president of operations or procurement or a director. So really customize your deck and think about what your messaging needs to be depending on who you're specifically interacting with during that stage of the deal. Make your pitch about them. I think one of the other big mistakes that uh, salespeople make is that they come in and they talk about themselves or their product or their service and don't necessarily apply it to the customer. Give your customer a chance to talk about their business and share, share some of their business challenges. And from there, you should have some base slides, be, but be able to customize your presentation on the fly. Make it about them, not about you. So let's talk a little bit about the elevator pitch. What is the elevator pitch? An elevator pitch is a short description of an idea, product, service, or company that explains the concept in a way such that any listener can understand it in a short period of time. Um, there are different philosophies on the elevator pitch, but we're going to talk about the four key components that need to be included. If you cannot express and get to the bottom of what your business does, why you do it, who you do it for, and the results that you deliver in less than a minute, then you need you have some work to do. <laughs> you need to be able to customize that. Then you can build your pitch deck and details around that, but that needs to be the foundation. So anytime you're at a conference, um, anytime that you're having a, a business meeting, if you're, you know, somebody says, what do you do, right? Like, tell me about your company. What, what, you know, what is it that you do? You need to be able to have an answer that you can deliver in a very short period of time that individual, that the individual that you're talking to understands exactly what you do. Not memorize though, but customize. I cannot emphasize enough that the messaging has to be customized depending on your prospect's um, business or the business challenge that you're trying to solve for. But is the elevator pitch dead? Because I hear that a lot, right? Oh, hi, you know, Heidi, the elevator pitch is dead. Nobody does the elevator pitches at all. I happen to be a traditionalist, but I went out to, to LinkedIn because I, I did and did a survey. We had over 1,500 responses, but um, the interesting details about this is that 45% said, nope, the elevator pitch is alive and well today. Um, I use it every day in my business and, and it's still an incredibly important strategy in terms of how I generate leads and how I uh, close business. 10% um, yeah, said yes, you know, so yesterday. Um, others said it really depends on the situation with, which was primarily based on the stage of the 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 stage where the business is at. So early on in the cycle, the elevator pitch was very prevalent, but as you got further into the cycle, it was more important to get um, more and more detailed in terms of what your service solution is and begin pulling back, you know, peeling back the onion. And so the elevator pitch really was just used primarily in the early stages of a deal. 
And some said, you know, it's been replaced with some other things like just genuine conversations and in storytelling, um, really focusing on value proposition, power statements. And the other interesting thing is the elevator pitch. You know, we often think of it more as a PowerPoint presentation that there's so many new delivery, delivery methods, particularly video that's emerging right now as a way to deliver these messages that the integration of these um, these different strategies is really important. So there's four different parts of the pitch that I would like you to think about as you're putting together the elevator pitch. First is pretty obvious. Um, what, what's your product or service name and what category or industry do, do you support? Okay, pretty, pretty basic. The second is what is the problem that you are attempting to solve for? So what's the business challenge, either based on the client or based on the industry that you're selling into? What's the business challenge that you're trying to solve for? And then once you identify what that business challenge is, you lay out how your solution solves for it. Following that, you can you can move to benefit statements. So you how you solve for it, and then what the benefits or results of your solutions are. What I like to think of is that move that you should move from the elevator pitch to an elevator question. And what I like about that strategy is that you before you speak to a customer, you can think about the four different parts of the elevator pitch, but another way to really simplify it and boil it down is to ask yourself, I help who? Who's your audience? Who's your ideal customer profile? I help them do what, right? Um, what is it that, what is the impact and what can you help them solve for? so that they can deliver X results. I use this a lot before I'm going into meetings to determine once I have a better understanding of what the customer challenge is, to try to really boil it down into this very simple format. Um, and then it helps me frame the conversation. You know, but the there's also some more modern approaches to the sales pitch. Um, one of my favorite books, if you haven't um, bought it or read it, um, I would highly recommend it, is by Daniel Pink. Uh, he wrote a book called To Sell as Human, and he talks about some modern day sales pitches that act as, you know, updates to the classic elevator pitch. Um, his approach is fo focus more on translating your product or services value proposition into six different very simple formats. And that depending on who you're talking to or the stage of the conversation that you're in, you can sort of whip out one uh, or another when it's appropriate. I'm not in the interest of time going to go through all of these in detail, but he talks about the one word sales pitch, pitch the question sales pitch, the rhyming sales pitch, the subject line sales pitch, the Twitter sales pitch, and the Pixar sales pitch. And I will, um, I will cap, you know, write those up for you and summarize those, and I can send those to you as um, a follow up. In addition to some some really good references and resources and books that I think would be great um, for you all to have. So. Um, Leslie, I'll do that as a as a follow up and send that out to the to the group so that we can distribute that. But the one of the six that I really like and it it sort of challenges my brain is the whole concept of the Twitter sales pitch. So I presented you know the four different uh, components of an elevator pitch, but if you were to really condense that even further and think about how to communicate your product or service or company's value proposition in 140 characters, what would that look like? What would you say? And that's what I'd like to see if we have time at the end, if you, if you can take that on as a challenge and, um, 
you know, give 140, 40 character uh, Twitter sales pitch on, on your business. So start thinking about that. So let's do a test drive. I'm going to walk you through just a very high level um, pitch deck, a couple of slides on girls who sell. And then I'm going to show you the, um, you know, my elevator pitch that I do today, um, as well as my Twitter sales pitch that I, that I do. So here we go. If you could achieve an 11% higher win rate, have an 8% higher chance of stage acceleration, an 8% higher chance of quota attainment, and a 19% higher and achieve 19% higher revenue through increased team diversity. As a leader, would you hire more women? kind of a no-brainer, right? I mean, when you look at the data, women, and I don't know if there's men on the call, so I'll apologize in advance, but the numbers don't lie. Women are actually stronger at sales and consistently outperform their male counterparts in just about every criteria that you can look at from a sales perspective. 86% of women meet or exceed their sales quota versus 78% for men. Women are 5% more likely to close a deal and have an 11% higher annual win rate. That is revenue that goes right to the bottom line. 54% of deals led by women move to the next stage of the sales cycle versus 49% of men. And it's a proven fact that diverse teams overall perform better. So when you look at diverse teams in sales, 62% of companies who had 45% more women in their sales ranks drove higher than average level levels of profitable revenue. When I look at the data, my conclusion is that it's not to hire more women is not only the right thing to do, but it's certainly good for business. The challenge is that women are significantly underrepresented in sales. Today, 35% is the percentage of women in B2B sales roles versus men, even though women represent over 50% of the workforce. When you look at women in sales leadership, the percentage drops to 19%. And when you look at women in uh, tech sales versus men, it drops down to 12%, even though that's one of the highest growing categories in terms of B2B sales. And what's even worse is that the percentage of women in co of color in professional sales drops into the low single digits. It's just unacceptable. And that is what Girls Who Sell is trying to solve for. So how do we, how do we go about solving for this gender gap? First of all, from our perspective, we believe that we need to have conversations earlier in the career cycle. So when we were looking at putting together our business plan, we realized that there were a lot of fabulous organizations uh, like Women's Sales Pros and Hashtag Girls Club and um, you know, a lot of other companies that are working with women who are already in sales who might want to take their career to the next level. So move from an individual contributor to a sales leadership role or a manager or director. Um, but there wasn't a lot of focus on getting earlier in the pipeline and having conversations, positioning sales as viable career choice at the stage when women are making pivotal decisions on their career paths. So it was our perspective that 
we really needed to get earlier in the career sales in the career cycle and start having these conversations like they're doing in STEM today. We need to position sales as a viable career choice. There's still a lot of misperception out there on what sales is and what sales isn't. When I've interviewed, gosh, hundreds and hundreds of women, um, all different ages, um, across all different backgrounds. And one of the things that I frequently hear in those conversations is that uh, sales isn't for them. Uh, that not only one is it sort of a, a bro culture, but they believe that it's more um, like use, use car salesmen, uh, pushy, and that, you know, kind of wolf of Wall Street. So we need to do a lot of education in terms of debunking some of these negative perception and myths that are out there, because that's actually not what business to business and professional sales is at all. It's about consulting. It's about building relationships. It's about having attention to detail and solving prob problems and engaging with customers. Um, and, and once you begin to educate, particularly young women, on, the, on what sales is and debunk some of those myths, the aha moment happens and the light bulb goes off. They're like, oh, those are my innate skills. I do that all the time, right? Those are things that come naturally to me. And that's actually why women are so good at sales to begin with. Um, we also need to provide education and training uh, on sales skills earlier in the process. And we need to create opportunities for women from diverse communities. So we need to look at our recruiting practices. We need to become very intentional about diversity recruiting and have metrics and budget around diversity recruiting and be sure that that is a measurement that's taken into consideration. And we need to create um, those opportunities for, for women not only in early stages, but once they get into sales, career pathing and training so that they can move through, move into um, other positions within the organization. So that's exactly why Girls Who Sell was born. What we do, um, our mission is to not only close the gender gap in business to business sales, but to build the largest pipeline of diverse early stage female sales talent. Why do we do it? To create a world where B2B sales is accessible and an intentional career consideration for every woman. How do we do it? Uh, through education. We've launched Girls Who Sell Academy. Uh, we have training programs that uh, position sales as a career alternative. We teach early stage career job seekers um, the benefits of a career in sales, the financial stability that they can achieve through sales. We work with uh, high school and colleges and corporations um, to provide uh, training and education. We also uh, give them exposure and uh, to, to the sales process and give them the opportunity to participate in sales competitions and to uh, really experience what the day of in the life of a sales professional actually is. We pair them with mentors um, who are already in the profession. Uh, mentorship is a, is a key component um, to our program. And then we provide er experiential uh, learning opportunities as well. So when I think about what um, our elevator pitch is, based on the information that I just, and framework that I just provided you, this is really how I, how I put it together. And I'm just gonna read it, but Girls Who Sell is an ed tech company that was founded to democratize professional sales and to build the largest pipeline of diverse early stage female sales talent. Today, women comprise over 50% of the global workforce, yet they represent only 35% of all B2B sellers. 
To solve for this gender gap, we partner with colleges and universities to provide sales education and position sales as a viable and lucrative career option. By doing so, we enable organizations to recruit qualified sales candidates and to build diverse teams, which drive higher revenue and profitability. So do you see all four components of the elevator pitch in there? Raise your hand if you do, right? So let's go back. I'm going to go back. Four elements, right? Your product or service name. So up front, I said we're girls who sell and we're an ed tech company. The problem that we're trying to solve for, that women are underrepresented in sales, um, particularly di diverse women. How are we trying to solve for it? Um, we've launched an organization that uh, whose mission it is to build the largest pipeline of diverse early stage female sales talent. We partner with universities and, and colleges and provide education. And the benefits of our solution is that in the end, as I laid out, by doing so, we enable organizations to recruit qualified sales candidates and to build diverse teams, which drives higher revenue and profitability. I've just summed up exactly what my what our business can do for a potential prospect in 60 seconds. It's harder than it seems. So as you begin thinking about it. So then I was like, okay, how can I boil this down into 140 characters, right? And uh, I gotta tell you, it was a little bit of a challenge uh, for me to do that, but this is what I came up with. Women represent 35% of all B2B sellers. Girls Who Sell was founded to close the gender gap and to build the largest pipeline of diverse early stage female sales talent. That um, sums it up in 140 characters. And I know that I didn't get it to one word, but if I was really going to just sum it down and summarize it even, uh, even further, I could bring it down to three words, hire more women. That's it. So we actually have a little bit of time. I moved through that a lot more quickly. Um, so why don't we open it up for questions and then do, if we have a couple of brave souls that would like to, um, you know, share their elevator pitch and get feedback, I'd love to do that. Well, the elevator pitch relates to, um, I believe, all of the sales challenges that the sponsors are running for the sellathon. So I want to give the participants first dibs at getting some feedback from Heidi. I mean, this is just a fantastic opportunity. Um, and you know, bear in mind, anybody who's doing the CDW challenge, it's really about just pitching yourself. So like I said, this is just a fantastic opportunity to make sure you nail that when you when you record yourself and, um, and present to them. So, so why don't Christina, we all take a few minutes? Sorry, um, yeah, we'll please take five minutes. We've got some time. Think about it. If you want to pitch yourself um, and take a stab at that and get some feedback on what you're working on right now, we have time to do that. Happy to have you go through that. Um, um, you can do your. You can do an elevator pitch. You can try a, tw a Twitter sales pitch, um, or um, if that seems a little bit overwhelming, think about it, framing it like this, right? I help who to do what so that they can achieve what result. Gave a lot of different options in terms of how you may be able to approach this. And Leslie, I'm happy to send this deck out afterwards too, because I know it's a okay. lot of information so that they can take a look at it and references as they're putting together their presentations. That, that would be amazing. And we will we'll post it in the Discord channel. But yeah, but we have uh, two of us from Power to Fly here. If if you want to hear a Power to Fly elevator pitch. We're, that we're would be awesome. Do that. Why don't you, why don't we do that? We'll warm everybody up. Okay, awesome. Well, how about uh, I will introduce our head of sales, the amazing Christina Duke. Hi. 
Hi, Hi great to connect with you again. And hello, Hi. everyone on the line. Nice to talk to you again. Thanks for yes. joining. Thank you so much for teaching us all of this. And thank you to our community and uh, everyone that's on the line. Okay. Uh, always fun to go first. Um, so <laughs> I'll jump right in. Power to Fly is a global diversity hiring and retention platform. We help companies attract, hire, and retain qualified talent from underrepresented groups, such as women, Black, Latinx, LGBTQIA plus folks, veterans, neurodiverse folks, and more. We do this via employer branding, virtual and in-person hiring events, sourcing services, as well as mentorship and leadership development programs. Finally, we help with DEI strategy and consulting, including training on topics like allyship and unconscious bias. We're an yeah, end. I, oh, sorry. <laughs> well, I, there's a one part that I'm still trying to figure out, which is now I'm like, oh, it's getting kind of long, um, which is like the benefit portion of it. Yeah, I think I, so. I loved what you what you wrote. I think it's really powerful. The th the one part that I think that might be missing is what problem are you actually trying to solve for, right? Why does your company exist? Why did you create an organization to consult and focus, uh, you know, on diversity hiring, right? So I think if you added one more thing in there that said, listen, you know, and, and it might be, you know, one, we, even though organizations, I know this is long, but just off the top of my head, even though organizations have a focus on diversity, equity, equity, and inclusion, most organizations are falling short of their goal, right? And then you can tie it in, you know, we consult because when we help organizations build diversity and, and diverse bench strength throughout their, or, throughout their company, we know that diverse teams are going to outperform exponentially, right? And depending on sales, it's, you know, you saw the numbers, right? It's, it, it's um, 45%, right? If, if the teams are 62% diverse or higher, but for your industry or depending on the customer that you're speaking to, you can customize that, right? Yeah, thank you so much. I mean, great feedback. And I'm sitting here now typing things out into a, a, word, <laughs> a word count for Twitter, um, but I don't want to monopolize the conversation, um, but hopefully now I've broken the ice, somebody else broken wants to- Broken the ice, who wants to, or do any of our students on the call, be brave, it's fine. There's no wrong answer um, um, or anyone else. I mean, if you don't raise your hand, I'm gonna start calling on people. I'll go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, okay. So I don't have all your parts memorized as of now, but I will go off of the elevator pitch uh, that I just learned how to do from my cohort in job searching. Awesome. Who's who's this speaking? Um, I'm sorry. My well, let me do the pitch. <laughs> oh, there you go. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. Um, hi, my name is Monica Brugo Wires, and um, my background is six years plus in communications and marketing. Um, and most recently, I just crafted a thought leadership piece that garnered 17,000 hits in two months on wow. board. Um, I also run a podcast that's available on 96% of podcast apps. And I'm open and interested in talking to people about how to power up your marketing and communications. Yeah, love that, love that. So um, you're doing some incredible things. So I don't know the exact nature, Leslie, of the of like what they're being asked to do from the pitch, but I guess the way I might think of it, Monica, is if you were going into a job interview and you're doing an elevator pitch on what you're going to bring to the table. So it sounds like you're doing a lot around social media and marketing, right? What uh, is it? The, yeah, kind uh, of combo. Actually. Kind of combo, right? Yeah. So you're doing some amazing things, right? I mean, that that kind of hit rate and that kind of 
performance is in, incredible, right? So you gave your name, right? Um, and and your service cat, you know, I'm a marketing, so my name is Monica. I am actually a marketing and social media expert, mm -hmm. right? Um, I mean, yeah, the expert is key. <laughs> there is that what you're saying? Yeah, I think okay. it is, right? Okay. Be confident. You're going in. You're look what you've accomplished, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and so depending on think about if you think about maybe a job that you're um inter that you're interviewing for, you know, you're coming in and saying, I know that you're trying to hire someone who is going to be able to increase your brand presence. I'm making this up, increase yeah. your brand press present. Um increase the uh, performance on social media and, you know, whatever else, right? So, um, and um, how, this is how I can solve for it. I have background in providing XYZs. This is some of the results that I have been able to, to create for some of my other clients or for myself, right? Yeah. And this is how I would apply my skills and my expertise to your business. Okay. That makes sense. Maybe. It sounds um, slightly reversed. Like I know you're trying to do X and here's where I've done this. Uh, it could fulfill that. Uh, here's what I've done in the past and how I could fulfill it for you. Exactly. Perfect. Okay. That's okay. perfect. Right. Um, because then it's like, all right, what, you know, when can you, when can you start, right? Mm -hmm. Like, because you get, you know, um, you can, you, you can solve for my, my challenge of exactly what I'm trying to, to accomplish. And you have the background and you have the proven results. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you. That helps clarify it. Um, I, when I learned how to do that type of pitch, um, it wasn't mentioned to Taylor, but it's just kind of instinctually, I, you know, like naturally it's, I've been doing that on each yeah. interview, trying to do it. You know, I don't think I've done it hundred percent, but realizing that that's really key to, to tailor it to them and, and now start with where they're at as the audience. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And that goes to your homework too. So when, before you go you know, into an interview, learn about what the job requirements are. You know, I know this is probably going down a little bit in a rabbit hole outside of what the sellathon is, but but just as general advice, then you can tailor your conversation based on what they say that their qualifications are and 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 their needs are for the job because that's a clue as to what they're looking for. So if you, and you may not meet, don't stress, nobody meets 100% of the qualifications, by the way, those are just nice to have. But if you could take a look at um, some of the key ones and then uh, match your background and your experience to exactly what they're looking for, then that is a, yeah, that's we've, really strong, right? Yeah, we've been doing that, like pick Perfect. the top three and get a result accomplishment metric to match it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's perfect. Thank you. Um, I, I do. After you finish this section, I'd love to hear because I've been curious about sales for a long time. I did just do some e-commerce account marketing early on in my career for a couple of years. And you're right. I mean, I feel completely natural in doing that pitching and selling. And I mean, I just women tend to do that, right? Um, do. I, but I've never really understood uh, the compensation breakdown. And if I had to switch industries or a career and decided to go back to that, what would that look like? And so I can compare to what I've been doing. To what you've been doing? Yeah. Uh, why don't we do this? Um, since it's a little, that's a little off topic for this. I am happy to have a personal conversation with you. Why don't you just connect with me on LinkedIn if we're not already connected? Okay. And then let's schedule some time to chat and I can um, I can give you more detailed information about that. Absolutely. Happy to answer your questions. Thank you, Heidi. I appreciate mm -hmm. it. Yep. All right. Anyone else want to want to um, take a shot? Me, Valerie, okay. me, Valerie Ryan from Massachusetts. Awesome. Thanks for stepping up, Valerie. Sure. So the elevated pitch is like you're supposed to be 30 seconds or less. So here I go. 
Hello, everyone. I am Valerie Ryan from Massachusetts. I am a buyer, purchaser, and I also can quote and source the items for the retail products. I work with vendors. I have excellent communication. That's yeah, it. that's good. Um, the elevator pitch can be a, li a, a bit longer. Um, okay. So I, d I don't think you necessarily have to keep it into that um, 30 seconds. I okay. definitely wouldn't go more than a minute. Okay. Um, but, but I think that you could um that that you you know that you could increase it a little bit um okay. i love the way you framed it i mean that was that was really good um the 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 one thing and and i think what we talked about with monica kind of still is the same advice and guidance mm -hmm. applies to your to to your pitch as well right think right. about um your skills and how you could potentially match it up to a problem that you're trying to solve for. So if right. you frame it like that when you're coming in and doing your elevator pitch, it's not all, it's not just about, hey, these are all my skills, but right. that how you would apply those skills. It, does that make sense? Yes. Yeah, so sometimes I, before I've had a couple interviews and before I've kind of said this, I've said that I'm like a detective. I find things. And then I'm also like a firefighter because escalations happen and fires happen. So I put out fires. And then I'm also like a police man or police woman because I have to enforce all the policies and procedures in place. Oh my God, I love that. You do? I mean, I've like said it a few times and they kind of look at me like, uh, oh so no. Do you, you like that? I actually really do. <laughs> I mean, I think <laughs> did you get so, it? Did you understand it? Did I you completely, understand? I completely get it. And, right. and maybe because of the industry that I'm in, I'm like, oh yeah, I completely get that, right? Like, yeah. yeah. Um, and, and so I don't know. I I think it's super creative. Thanks, but that's how I refer to it. Like I I would joke that office supplies was life or death for some people. <laughs> it has it has been so. Think about framing that though, right? Like okay. that's how, when you think about how you solve for it. Um, yes. So, you know, when you think about the problem, the problem, and I don't know what, what could be a potential problem that someone, you know, needing office supplies. Uh, need, you, you quoted need. the wrong item and they shipped the wrong item to you. So now you have to requote it and find the correct item that was requested by sales. Okay. So yeah, that's a problem. That's a problem, right? <laughs> Especially if you needed it for a meeting and and yes, I would, yes, I'd be having yep. a heart attack, right? Yes, yes. So, so so then think about then how you apply your skills to help solve solve for that. So so you could do it creatively. Yes. Imagine if you had a big customer, you know, you had a big meeting with you know the executive team at your organization and you ordered products that were supposed to be delivered the day before oh yeah i've had that yeah 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 yes yep. right yeah and it was wrong right yes and then you know this is what i do you know it, it, you get my my you i know. do i do yep and then so that happens you know X percent of the time. And, and this is how, you know, we or my skills, you know, can solve my company or my skills can solve for it. Right. Okay. Yeah. I like that. That's happened so many times. And I, you know, I worked for so many years in the same position for the company that I got to like really think of it. And as you were saying that at the time when someone needed something, I did have a situation like that, you know, luckily exactly. it was not my, my era. <laughs> You know, so I was able to scramble and get it fixed right away because that's what I do. And um, yeah, no, I like that. I will use that. Thank you. You're welcome. I think that's great. Anyone else want to take? We could probably have time for one more. Uh, me? Can I go? Sure. Okay. <laughs> I create visual art that tells a story which sparks a natural curiosity in others. 
that goes beyond or beneath the surface. And I do this for other brands and other small businesses in a way that stand out, establishing story identity. Ooh, I really like that. I really like that a lot. Um, so first, um, be sure that you include your name, right? Um, and now do you own a company or you just do that on a personal basis? Yeah, so uh, on a personal uh, sole proprietorship. Okay. Um, so what what's your name? Monique. Monique. Yes. So, um, hi, my name is, uh, you know, hi, I'm, um, Monique and, um, I have, uh, an organization, um, that provides creative services to, uh, companies that require X, Y, Z, and then go into the way you laid that out was perfect. Right. Um, in terms of, of the way that you, you laid that out. The only thing that I would maybe add at the end is a little bit more on a benefit statement in terms of how what you create maybe helps them with branding or brand identity or whatever. But I think uh, I loved what you actually wrote. I think it's really good. Thank you. Okay. So what might be, uh, Monique, a benefit statement uh, that you could end with? I'm putting you on the spot um, a little bit, I know. <laughs> um, I guess um, the I'll, I'm thinking of like um, how I listen to what um, the person would like incorporated in the uh art piece uh for their or like for instance in a logo um listen to what they would like incorporate it such as color or theme something like that yeah i think that falls into more on how you solve for it right that you really begin to understand their their brand and um and um how you incorporate you know color visuals you know, um, you know, helps you helps uh, to create that brand identity, but maybe the benefit to them is um, that that because of the power of the artwork and visuals that you create, um, that it has resulted in X percentage increase in, um, you know, in social media uh engagement just as an example of a ben benefit statement right okay percentage and that's just one example but maybe and depending on you know but but that could be a, a good one right or mm -hmm. um they've increased their their you know facebook or linkedin followers by you know x percent or whatever their business challenge is um, that you were trying to solve for with 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 the artwork or branding that you created, tie mm -hmm. a result tie a result to it. Okay, I'm just writing all this down. No, it's all good. Do we have time for one more, Leslie? Yeah, definitely. Okay, cool. How about uh, one of the Let's see. I see uh, Dave. Dave share. Dave, are you there? He's on mute. Yeah, I don't think he's connected to the video. Maybe just the audio. Ah, uh, okay. I was trying to get some of um, some of the guys involved. Alan Johns, I see. Let me go through. Robert. No. All right. Any of the other? Anybody else want to um, want to take a shot?
Danielle, maybe, or looks like somebody unmuted. No, Emma, how about you? Um, okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, Hi, I'm Emma, and I'm, a, and I'm an experienced lending officer with demonstrated history of working in the banking industry. I'm skilled in negotiation, teamwork, leadership, and portfolio management. Have strong finance profession. I'm a strong finance professional, and I look forward to assisting you. The thing is, I I work with um, um, a commercial bank. And I, I assist a portfolio of high net worth clients. So, you know, in, in looking to move up the corporate ladder, I, I joined this call to see how I can better um, improve my elevator, which I know it needs work based on what you taught today. And based on the four part pitch, I know I need to tweak it somewhat. So I'm going to take what you presented on this call today um, to enhance what I have. Yeah. I think you have a really good start, Emma, um, in terms of presenting again, you know, I just think adding in um, um, some benefit statement at the end would probably just round that out, right? Just talk about your results. Okay, I will, I will tweak it. Yeah, but I think you have a really good foundation there as a, as a starting point. For okay, sure. I also I also posted a question when I I signed up for for um this webinar. Okay. Um, would you say that your elevator pitch is the same as um the summary that you would have on your LinkedIn or on your resume? Should it be? Yeah, I think it's I, I um maybe LinkedIn would be a little bit longer um in terms of the summary section, but the summary section on your resume. This is this would be a really good thing actually to to include on that. The only other thing that I might suggest putting including on a resume just is you know the kind of um, opportunity that you're looking for. So starting okay. with you know I'm looking for you know a director level position in finance and then go into your little elevator pitch, right? Okay, got it, got it, got it. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Okay. So thank you. Yeah. Good question. All right. I think that's um, it. Unless there's more questions, I'm um, definitely open to um, definitely open to answering them. Hey, this has been amazing, and I will certainly be revising my power to fly elevator pitch. So thank you for the tips. <laughs> It definitely needs some work. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. So I'm looking at Heather's question. I'm hesitant to solve the company specific problem during the interview, giving them the solution. So um, hiring manager can use it and avoid hiring you. Um, that has happened to me. Um, wow, I'm I'm sorry to hear that that has has happened to you um um i think it's really how you apply your skills to solving a business ch challenge to um to solve for a business challenge that they're having so don't necessarily go into your interview and lay out a business plan right um but you know on and how you're going to you know the kinds of programs that you would implement, or exactly what you're what you're going to do to solve for their business challenges. But think about so you know your company, the company that you're interviewing, their business challenges. Um, you know is X. I don't know what industry that you're in, but and so this is how my skills um, can apply and help you solve for that challenge. Not necessarily give them the answers. Does that make sense? Yeah, that, that makes absolute sense. But the, what they happen is they they drill in during the interview. So how would you do that? You know, they drill in a deep dive and they want to get to that specific. Yeah, and I, you know, I have been guilty of that myself, right? Saying, okay, based on what you've learned about our company, I don't necessarily ask how I'd solve for a business challenge um, per se, but how, how you would position 
the company in the market. So you could sort of default. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, um, if that if that's what they're going to do, they're not the company you're going to want to work for anyway, and certainly not the manager or supervisor you're going to want going to want to work for if they're going to be stealing your ideas. <laughs> that's so true. Thank you. <laughs> right. So, I mean, I think that'd be a major red flag anyway, um, for sure. Um, but just, you know, but you don't need to give them the king keys to the kingdom. Um, just apply your skills and then and then just give them, you know, some ideas based on your on your um, experience and background. I think that's what I did. I defaulted and said I've, I will use X, Y and Z, you know, skills. So yep. I can solve like I have solved in my previous, you know, previous. company in this program. Exactly. That's, That's a, how I worded it. But then they're just like, well, how would you solve this one? You know, how would you approach this? And I'm like, oh, wow. Yeah. And you and you want to answer it. Right. Um, but, um, you know, I, I, I would feel that if, that person then went and took your ideas or not a person of integrity anyway, you know, yeah. so I'm sorry Thanks. that happened to you. It's okay. It's a yeah. different world. Thank you though. Yeah. I like, yeah. Um, yeah. So I see Monica just uh, pitched there in there too, right? Maybe just offer higher level plus skills, past key results, not how you do it for them. So I think that's great advice, Monica. So I think that's it, Leslie. I think um, I'm a few minutes late here, so I need to drop, but um, I hope everybody enjoyed the presentation and learned. Good luck on your pitches. Um, I hope that you all knock it out of the park and I'm sure you're going to be amazing. And Leslie yeah. and the Fly team, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, thank you. I'm so excited. Thanks everyone. Take care. Take care, bye. Bye.